Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Today we're going to do an after the hike from my recent backbone trail. Stay tuned and I'll tell you guys what I learned. Thanks for watching. So it's cold, I'm in my shop, I got my gloves on because it is cold, but we're gonna talk about my recent hike to the Backbone Trail. I'll leave a link down below to both the hike video as well as the gear video from that trip. As I've done for the last couple of overnight trips, I figured I would go ahead and do an after the hike video just to tell you guys what I thought about the gear that I used, how things went, what I learned, what I would do different, stuff like that. I think it's always helpful because I'm like everybody else, I'm always learning and maybe you guys can learn from my experiences. The hike itself was just under 10 miles total, 9.65 miles total. Uh, that was out and back. I did hike to a specific campsite that I'd known of before, so that made it pretty easy as far as knowing how far I needed to go. Average speed was like two and a half miles according to my GPS, which isn't too bad for me. That was when I was moving, so not too bad. I did hustle back, as you saw in the video, uh, because my wife and my daughter were sick, so I hustled back the second day. Uh, so that increased my miles per hour pretty quickly. So first we'll talk about the gear. The gear that I used, the backpack again, right back here, the 3FUL ultralight backpack worked extremely well. Very pleased with it. I'm ready to do a review on it, so I'll do that in the next couple of months. A lot of people have asked about it, but I definitely recommend the backpack for the price. I also, for the first time, used my new uh, gravity water filter. I made it out of the basic Sawyer squeeze along with a large bag uh, and some tubing. I basically put some grommets in the bag and hung it and it worked extremely well. If you guys are interested on how I did that, I can do a video showing you guys how I did it. Just let me know in the comments below. Cook kit worked uh, pretty well. Once again, I need a windscreen and I ordered one, so next trip I will have a windscreen. In fact, I have a video coming up on the difference between having a windscreen and not having a windscreen and seeing how much that actually helps you from the standpoint of boil time. I have my new Helinox chair, which was awesome. I have a video on that coming out that I shot during this trip. It is an awesome, awesome piece of kit. Can't recommend enough. One pound, one ounce, I think something like that. So pretty lightweight and very much worth it from the standpoint of comfort. And the Z-Pax bear hanging kit was awesome. I'll leave a link to all this gear down below, guys. Uh, it is so easy to use and I highly recommend it. It weighs hardly anything. Lastly, I also got a new Sea to Summit trowel. Uh, it worked real well. It folds up more compact than my old regular orange Coughlin's trowel and it really worked well, really pleased with it. Basic, nothing to do a review about it for, I think, but it did work really well. From the standpoint of electronics, I learned a few things. First of all, I took a much larger battery bank this time than I did on my prior trip, and that was good. I like having extra power. I still used over half the battery bank uh, to charge batteries and stuff like that. So if you're into making videos or just going out in the woods and you wanna make sure you can keep your stuff charged, I do recommend, even though it's heavier, I recommend having a larger battery bank because it does help keep things charged easier. I kept the battery charging all the time. As soon as I finished using a battery on my camera, I put it into my little bag, popped it into the charger. Luckily, I am able to use a USB charger for my particular camera. Some of the larger cameras, you can't do that. Or it's harder to find, but definitely get that if you can. I just kept on charging all the time and I never had any issues with batteries for my camera. One thing you did notice and that I learned, my Rode shotgun microphone came with a dead cat, a little cover for it to help prevent wind noise. Never really thought about it much until I got back and I started looking at this footage. There was a lot of wind noise, so I will never go out again without the dead cat on my microphone. Health-wise, I felt really good. I had no problems whatsoever. There were some uh, hills, but nothing bad, nothing to report there. Shoes worked very well. Once again, using the Luco tape really helped prevent any problems, any hot spots, no issues with my feet whatsoever, so that's good. Now the big thing is the food. I did decide to go all paleo on this particular trip. The paleo snacks were great. I had granola that I had in the morning that was excellent. I had uh, some beef jerky that was really good. I had some chicken jerky that, that was like a buffalo style chicken jerky that was outstanding. So from the standpoint of snacks, I thought it was great. From the standpoint of meals, although the Wild Zora meals were good, there was nothing wrong with them, they tasted fine. Man, I just figured out that maybe the trail isn't the best place to try to really, really stick to low carb or try to find things that are low carb that still really are appetizing. At the end of a long day, I really wanted something good to eat. I didn't even end up making the meal for dinner because it just didn't sound good. I mean, there was nothing wrong with it, like I said. I mean, it tastes fine. It just wasn't enticing. And at the end of that day, man, you want something good. You want something tasty. So 
Something to think about, I think that I will not go with paleo meals again. I think after a long hike, you, you know, it's not that you deserve something, it's just that your body does crave something. That's just me, everybody's different. Some people may love these meals. Uh, like I said, they taste fine. You could do some interesting things with them. Um, one of the things I thought about was just one packet. It has so much food. You brought that out, you could bring some chicken bouillon cubes or beef bouillon cubes make a soup out of it, I think that would work really, really well because everything is chopped up really small. From the standpoint of food, I decided next time I might try to do another paleo video, but try to do things as low carb as I can without specifically paleo things. I think you can do that and I think you can do it for less money. One thing I will say that was great was the Nut Pods coffee creamer. I'll leave a link down below to the Amazon link for the Nut Pods. That's where I got it. It is awesome. It does taste as creamy and as normal to heavy cream as I have found in a no carb creamer. So that's it guys, just a quick video about what I learned on this particular trip. I had a great time. I wish I could have stayed out a little bit longer, but I rushed back like y'all saw in the video. Do you guys like these videos? Is there anything y'all would like different about these particular videos? More talking, less talking, uh, more specifics. I did shoot several review videos during this trip, so those will be coming out. I just didn't include them in the main video because it's just easier to organize and allows me to put out more content. So if there's anything y'all want different for the next trip, let me know down below. Otherwise, if you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up down below. That is how these videos spread across YouTube and really helps us out. If you like the content and you want to see more of it, make sure you give us a subscription. If you really want to make sure you don't miss a video, hit that little ding-dong bell and you'll be the first to know. As always, guys, I appreciate y'all checking out the Paleo Hiker MD. Stay tuned for more videos.